I once stripped naked, then accidentally climbed into bed with my father-in-law. <laughs> Please, T. Were you drunk? Yes. Was it his bed or was it his, a spare bed in your house? It was our bedroom in our house and they'd been babysitting. And so I noticed another presence in the bed, which I assumed to be my wife. Yeah. And well, so lovely I... thing to say about your wife. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> love, it's just that you look like, you know, your dad. It was dark. <laughs> it was dark. <laughs> She'd gone to bed before me and she said, hey, what, watching telly, you know. What, what were you watching just out of interest? I can't remember that. What time was it? Four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning, probably repeats of this on Dave. <laughs> <laughs> So they, this is your bed. Where were you then? Were on sofas downstairs? No, we were thinking? in the spare room. So the, oh, that's lovely. You've given yeah. up your superior bed yes. for the in-laws. Yeah. Lee, what do you do when your in-laws come round? I make up a really lovely, lovely bed with uh, lovely silk sheets and a lovely thing and put that in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you, you've, you've come into bed, you yeah. think that your, your wife, she's gone ahead of you. I, I thought it should be spark out. You spark know. out in the bed. Yeah, yeah, and I've often done this journey in the dark. So she's often in bed before me. Yes, And yes. I know what to do. I'm, I can do it in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> With the clothes off, round the side of the bed, leap in. Give her a, a snuggle. Oh, did you? Did you? <laughs> did, you give her, did you give her a snuggle? I went to give. Did you? Her a snuggle. Oh no, naked. <laughs> naked. Which way? <laughs> which way was he facing? Thank God he was back in, hey? the other way. I spooned him. You How? Spooned him. <laughs> like, like that makes it better. I think it's worse. I think you'd have to have done it both ways to know which is worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Were you spooning in the way you spoon when you want to have a cuddle as you go to sleep, or were you spooning in a way which was hoping to just nudge her awake? <laughs> <laughs> luckily, There's a subtle difference between those two. I know two. that subtle difference. <laughs> but luckily, I wasn't quite that excited yet. <laughs> yes! No. Oh, my word. It's quick, though. I mean, honestly, I mean, I whip it back, the whip the thing back. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as I'm sort of approaching the body in the bed, um, I hear John. And I, I literally flew out of the bed, ah! And, um, and then the lamp went on, and um, I'm trying to put my underpants back on. Oh, you're completely naked. naked? Yeah. Oh, the whole thing, I'm trying to get my underpants twisted, fell over. It was like a comic. It was ridiculous. Why, oh. would you, um, why would you go to the effort of trying to put your underpants on in front of them? <laughs> because I was naked. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't do it in front of them. This is right. Just it's grab them and leave. That's the sort of strategic decision you make when you're used to doing that. <laughs> <laughs> the first time, you can very easily think, I, I both want to leave and dress myself and make the mistake of trying to do the two things at once. Yeah. <laughs> and what would what happened in terms of the father-in-law? He, he was very, very lovely about it. And he went, uh, one too many last night? And I went, yeah. And that was it. What are you thinking? Is it striking you as true? That's definitely possible. I believe he has issues with alcohol. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going true. Lee. You're saying true? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm... Yeah. OK. I will go with my team and blame them. You and say it's true. <laughs> OK. John, were you telling us the truth or were you telling us a lie? It is, in fact, sadly, true. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, it's true. John did climb into bed naked with his father-in-law. On a recent train journey, under cover of darkness in a tunnel, I secretly switched bananas with the stranger opposite, because his <laughs> looked better than mine. So, uh, why was there no lighting in yeah. this train? Were you perhaps <laughs> travelling in the 1870s? <laughs> um, <laughs> because it was daytime, and in daytime, they don't turn the lights on in a train. What? So they were unaware of the tunnels <laughs> on their route. The tunnel was so brief and so quick, they didn't bother. So it was a very brief, so it was basically like an extended bridge. It was a, it was a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a very quick tunnel, but very nevertheless, quick tunnel. I would say, I would to say swap bananas. No, no more than five seconds. Can you demonstrate how you did it? Yeah. I had my banana, and I was looking at it thinking, you know, when yours is just a bit... It's not... I like them really yellow. I don't like that bit where they're just gonna start to go a little bit black. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just a little bit. But it was close enough where I thought, 
Given an opportunity, I reckon I could swap that banana because he was reading his paper. But he's not concentrating on that banana. He hasn't fully engaged with the colour. So he was reading his paper. Yeah. With, so he's holding a newspaper with two hands, and then in one of the hands, he also had a banana. No, no, it was on the table in front of. Have you been on a train recently? <laughs> <laughs> the point is, he wasn't holding the banana. I'm not that bold. No, fine. I'm and not that so bold. That would have been awkward in the darkness. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Come on, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was sitting on the table, his was sitting on okay, the table. Okay, and you saw the two bananas, yours has gone a bit manky, Ma his not is bit, pristine. Just, just, fractional. just on the turn. Just enough so, that so, I could get away with swapping it. Yeah, so it's plausible that he might think, oh, I thought this banana was yeah. fresher than this. But it was Never, like a film. It's he been was 14 seconds later, maybe it's just turned. <laughs> 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 Did you have any reading materials or were you just sat? Don't lock me, you know I can't read. <laughs> I was simply entertaining myself as ever with my extra sketch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember thinking. I'm <laughs> 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 yeah. looking at it. He's not looked at that banana once. That's wasted on him, yeah. but that's irritating me. <laughs> yeah. eh? yeah. So uh, and I just thought, like that, put it back in its case. I'm very protective of it. <laughs> and I thought, could I? And I was tempted to do it. I thought, no, I'll never get away with this. And then suddenly it was pitch black. I'm struggling to envision a tunnel that it takes five seconds to get through, but is. Well, do you know those really long tunnels? Yeah. Imagine one of them, but really short. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that renders the yeah. whole carriage it just a complete Absol blackout. Yeah. Well, you know, all I could say, th this is one important factor you're missing bright what? sunshine, eye adjustment. <laughs> the, the effect of the bright sunlight the bright, directly was, on your eyes. Did I not mention how bright it was? Very, very bright. Oh, it was this... bright. I can't help thinking he wasn't reading that paper. He was shielding him. <laughs> 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 so, in fact, the it... banana was so bright. <laughs> I think the bananas actually grew yeah. on the train. Yeah. It's <laughs> a moment of complete blackness. Black! You, you, you're, Black almost, night. <laughs> you're almost blinded I in this so blackness. Blind. <laughs> I you know, it was so dark. You know when it's so dark, you think, God, it's dark, I could nick a banana. <laughs> But that's my whole point. But how did you manage yeah, how to did put you your hand banana? on his banana? <laughs> to be so... I mean, because you must I have rummaged a... around. No, I didn't rummage. Picture the scene. The etcher sketches away. He's behind his paper. And I'm looking, and his banana's definitely reachable. And he's not looking, and it's there. And I'm, even before we go through the tunnel, I'm tempted. I'm going, could I? No. Could I? No. There's no one looking here. There's no one looking. And I'm so close to making that decision. Yeah. It goes black. Get it. Get it. Go. <laughs> Face. He literally, it made a bit of a noise, a bit of a kerfuffle, and the lights came, and he literally went. I <laughs> knew <laughs> I'd got away with it. So, what do you think, David? What do you think? Absolute nonsense. All right. What do you Just think? listen, give me yeah. another go. Um, <laughs> I, I... It was a pomegranate on a rickshaw. <laughs> It's a very, very rich, complete picture that Lee has painted. Yes. But I don't think he... I, oh. I simply don't think Great he would fruit steal and someone <laughs> else's banana. Yeah. I think he looks low on potassium as well. Yes. <laughs> so, for you, it is a lie. Yeah. Lee, were you... This is everybody's on tenterhooks to oh. find out. <laughs> were you telling the truth? Or was it maybe a lie? Hmm? What do we think, Sue? <laughs> no. <laughs> This is the one where you know the answer oh, and you say. Oh, I see. Yeah, In that know. case, it's a lie. <laughs> I was so sure that Wombles were real, I used one as an example of a mammal in a GCSE biology exam. <laughs> <laughs> How could it be true? How could it be true, Lee? <laughs> But which one did you draw? What did he look like? I didn't draw anything. That wasn't in the question. Okay, yeah, you took it in the question. Was given like, an example what? of a mammal. Oh, you used it. Just wrote it down. I gave. Ball. I gave. Th it was give three examples of mammals, and I said bear because that's an obvious one. Yeah. Whale, bit less obvious. Yeah. Clever. And Womble was my third example. How old? How old yeah. were you at the time? Fifteen. Uh, uh, what are you looking at David for? Let's <laughs> <laughs> remind ourselves what the Wombles looked like. Uh, we've got Uncle Bulgaria. Yeah. <laughs> he was like the Don Corleone of the, uh, of the Womble family. What grade did you get then? A. You got A's, even though you think Wombles are mammals. I should I should make clear that I didn't think the children's programme was a documentary. <laughs> I 
I thought the children's programme, That Womble, was based on a real mammal. Jeez, for, ex for example, a bear is a real mammal, but, but, a but Yogi is Bear real. isn't a Thank fair you. representation. <laughs> You're telling me for a GCSE, at age 15, the question was, give three examples of a mammal. Look, <laughs> this isn't the end of a game show. It's not like, and this one's for the GCSE. <laughs> there were lots of questions. Well, surely the question in you know, a GCSE at 15 wouldn't be, give us an example of three mammals. It's a bit of a basic question. What? Why do you think that is so easy? Well, it's quite, it's quite you are such an intellectual snob. Because, <laughs> I'm sorry, you could have said cat, dog. That's what. Any number Are you, are you stuck for the third one? <laughs> <laughs> cat, dog, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what you're saying. You could say that you knew that they were fictional, but, but based on a real yes. animal called the Womble. I thought that maybe it was based on the fact that in yeah. real life they made their burrows from like condoms oh, you know, and. Yeah, yeah. and, and... <laughs> in reality, of course, most creatures perish because of litter, things that the everyday folk leave behind. <laughs> so, in a way, the Wombles did a lot of bad. Are you saying <laughs> that the Wombles they, message they encouraged exist. people to litter? Yes. <laughs> people sort of said, well, maybe I was going to throw this away properly, but maybe the Wombles can make an extension out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, people do dress dogs up like that these days, and so you, you couldn't be sure. Well, they're, they're possibly just trained uh, Wombles. Yeah. <laughs> but these in the, in the story, the Wombles were. That wasn't just poor old bewildered Womble. But someone's put some glasses on him. Mm. He's put his own glasses. He's gone to the Womble optician <laughs> and said, "Could you fashion me some reading glasses out of some stuff that everyday folk have left around?" And, and they've done that. Right. That, that's actually not true. He found the glasses. He found. Every, they found he found. The he found glasses of exactly the right prescription. No, no. Possibly. <laughs> possibly. There was no evidence that it was the right prescription. There was an episode, wasn't there? Where an, an old Man had died on Wimbledon Common. <laughs> Immediately the Wombles are on him. <laughs> Taking everything. He's his medals, his gold watch, his glasses, his shoes, and there he is naked. <laughs> no dignity. No dignity if the Wombles are around. It's a brilliant program. <laughs> What do we think, Bill? I think it would be an insult to Catherine's intelligence to believe that she wrote that down in an exam. I don't believe it. You don't? You see, I think... Go on, what do you think, though? No, I don't believe it. Why? No. Because I don't, because I think that she seems better educated than that. I mean, I got kicked out of school at 15 and... Why? Because I wasn't very educated and I didn't really know anything. I couldn't spell or read. I was doing high kicks and back flips all the time. They got bored of me. <laughs> what did you do when you were expelled? Did you just run out into the street, yeah. singing and dancing yeah. and going, yeah. I don't need this? Yeah. Yeah. I don't need this, I don't want this, I can still, I can do what? Head roll, head roll, head roll. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I would say that in the history of this programme, we have never had two <laughs> such opposing... That's <laughs> <laughs> Bill and Luke. Well, there we are. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's time, Lee, to uh, make a decision. Which way are you going to go, Lee? OK, well, I'll go with my team and say that it's not true. Even though my lie. gut is screaming it's true, I will go with my team and say it's a lie. OK. Catherine, is it a lie or is it true? It is, in fact, true. Oh. <laughs> Every time I shower, I must adhere to my strict system for drying myself. OK, quick as you can, what's the system for drying yourself? Well, I, I, uh, I always use a towel. <laughs> uh, Weird eccentric. <laughs> well, actually, I, I don't start with a towel. I, use, I, I, I sort of brush water off this arm. I can do that 20 times. With, with your hand? <laughs> with my hand. Yeah. And then 20 times that one. Do you dry yourself between your legs with your hands? <laughs> I, uh, no, I, 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 I don't, Richard. Uh, is it like an OCD thing where it, where it is 20, or is it roughly 20? Oh, it can be multiples of 20. <laughs> You're not serious. Yeah, so, like, 20 of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... We know what 20 is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the same one, and 30... The hair. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, I go, and then I think if I'm ready to move on to the towel phase, I think I've done the arm and head thing, it's towel time. <laughs> and when did, when did you start doing this? In the last uh, two years. Uh, when you reach for the towel, 
Um, are there any other oddities, or do you basically then proceed in what we would refer to as a conventional drying manner? Well, I, I get the towel and I do uh, 50 on the top of the head. <laughs> right. And then, and then this is quite a new development, actually. Probably within the last. The whole thing is quite a new development. <laughs> no, no, but this... you clearly had some sort of breakdown a couple of years ago. <laughs> So, right. so now it's 50 on top and 50 behind, whereas it used to just be 50 on top. What was it about your drying policy before this Good point, question. two or three years ago, that you considered inadequate? <laughs> I was getting through a lot of towels. <laughs> How much moisture do you hold? <laughs> I, I am unbelievably absorbent. You, one, one could wring me out like a sponge. I Have really... you tried that? Because that might be a more efficient way of... I don't see what it is about this system that is hard to believe or understand. I don't like it. No, no. <laughs> well, no don't do it. <laughs> if, if this turns out to be true, it's going to be a, a tense evening. <laughs> Do you or have you ever washed your car by hand rather than going through the drive-thru or something? Uh, no, never. No, really? Never. Never. I've You're never... the most middle-class man I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> You've never washed your own car? I've, I've been to the, uh, the, you know, the roly one. That's not the same, <laughs> I'll... I'm Getting the coin and putting it in the slot does not constitute manual labour. I've, <laughs> I've only had a car for three years. Maybe did that's this, why this started. Your, the, yes, it did the purchase of the car just, coincide yeah. with a new shower policy. <laughs> Uh, Having seen the car go through the roly thing that, for some reason, you don't know the name of, even though the name pretty much creates itself. <laughs> That's right. It's you sort of think, it's I want to create car, my own domestic version of this with my hands. <laughs> I, I don't... Yeah. Do you have a little sign when you go into the bathroom that says, Stop. <laughs> Once you get... Do you, do you edge forward, waiting? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> And you've got to do it quickly, cos you know the thing's going to go beep, beep, and you've got to get out of here. <laughs> so, David, it's time to take a guess. What do you think? Um, it's truly horrible. Um, <laughs> but I want, I want it to be true, and, and, I, and I, I'm an optimist in life, so I'll say it's true. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't go with that. I mean, if it is true, then it's really disturbing and frightening and, and all those other things that you scare your kids with. My instinct is that it's a lie. OK, so you're saying it's, it's a, a lie. lie. Well. Yeah. Miles, were you telling the truth, Miles, or were you telling a lie? Uh, it is true. <laughs> I recently shooed a fox out of the garden by squirting it with water. Five minutes later, I watched in horror as it returned with its brother and ate my plimsoll. <laughs> Please, team. Uh -huh. you think? <laughs> I've never heard anything so middle class in all the <laughs> Picture it. So you're in your house and you see the fox in the garden. Mm. Now you don't, with the greatest respect, you don't strike me as overly nimble. <laughs> no, so I'm not overly nimble, but I'm just nimble enough. Between one and ten, how quickly were you in the garden? I went out in the garden at top speed for me, yeah. which I'm afraid is now 6.7. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you, you come out into the garden, you, you've got the hose, you see yeah. the fox. And he sort of moves away a bit, shows some, a certain degree of, of fear of, of the alpha predator. Yeah. He sees me and he thinks, you know, I think I'm safe with this guy. <laughs> and I thought, well, I can't have this, I can't have the fox thinking it's one. If I lose my power to frighten off foxes, what am I? Can I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I grab, I grab my hose <laughs> and I... You know, Sorry, swizzle some down. water at them. I don't, I don't want to soak the poor creature. Did you put your thumb on the end? So I, I did put my thumb on the end, and I directed some water sort of towards the lawn, just kind of between him and me. Yeah. And that's enough. He's, right. he's off. I bet he went. After he, the fox went off, I bet he went. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot he hadn't turned it off. <laughs> Looked around sheepishly and thought, I better get those pimps <laughs> Are you in your pyjamas? I was wearing normal clothes. Well, David, we've and, a different opinion yeah, just, on what normal clothes. Yeah, yes, did, no, you, no. did you? Have... It, was, it was black tie, not white tie. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a nutshell, yeah. you had a fox in your garden, you come out, mm -hmm. water the thing out the garden, then a little while later, it comes back. <laughs> Two of them come Two back. Two of them. Now, yeah. where are you at this point? I'm, I'm in the kitchen, right. noticing they've come back to the garden, thinking, dear, oh, dear. There was deer there as well. <laughs> 
and then and then the fox and then one of the foxes goes and grabs this uh, plimsoll that I keep by the shed. Why? In, for for walking around the garden. One plimsoll. What? <laughs> yeah, there's two. I keep two. Tiny suggestion. Why don't you keep the plimsolls near the back door so you don't have to get your feet wet if it's raining? But well, you're full of home improvement ideas. <laughs> No, because I'm a moron. <laughs> what happens to the pencil? Uh, one of them savages this shoe. What's the other one doing? I, I don't know. I don't speak fox. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do a proper impression of a fox, I know a woman. <laughs> Providing you're a tad gullible, we'll show you exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so go on. So, no, so, so the... I say, hello, Mr. Fox. <laughs> Stop pooing on my lawn! <laughs> right, Lee, what are you thinking? Fundamentally, no Englishman leaves a pair of plimsolls as his garden footwear oh. and keeps them by a shed. So you're saying it's... It's a lie. It's a lie? Yeah, I think it's a lie. Well, I'll go with my team, even though I think it's true. Saying it's a lie. OK, David, squirting foxes in the garden, truth or lie? It is a lie. <laughs> of course so. <laughs> For my first term at university, I rented the bathroom in a student house and slept in the bathtub every night. Lee, Greg. Yes. Before we even start this, can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there'll, there'll be no, unless David stands up with me, there'll be no perspective. David? In fact, let's have proper perspective. Connie, can you stand up? <laughs> you know the question. Yeah. What's the answer? Uh, well, I just uh, hung off the end of the bath, as I hang off every single bed that I've ever slept in. It's, no, it's no, 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 no. You definitely don't hang off a bath. No, like you hang no. off a bed. <laughs> because a bed flat. go like that, and then you hang off. Yeah. The you have to go up and cross and hang off. <laughs> it's thing, all, but you're not a snake, Craig. The thing <laughs> what actually uh, drove me to change my circumstances was that I was genuinely... I was bruising the side of my... Uh, cheek regularly by waking up in the morning and clanging into one of the taps. Yeah, well, Can I ask why on earth you would sleep with your head at the tap end? <laughs> <laughs> that is mad. Yes, well, you know, I was 18 years of age and I mainly lived off uh, Thunderbird wine, so bad so decisions putting... were my forte at that period. <laughs> so did, you have, did you have a bed? In no. the house? Did you do... oh, oh, so that was the reason you was there in was, the bar? There was a... There was a um, well, why did you think he was in the bar? <laughs> So I chose to, Phil, yeah. How many other people were there in the flat? Uh, three. Three people, what, three beds? Yeah. Why would you not sleep on the floor next to the bath? We had a giant uh, 1970s sofa that had a particularly... a peculiar cor corner unit, mm. and I took um, both cushions from that corner unit and they fitted in the bath perfectly and it was incredibly comfortable. So, hang on, it wasn't a freestanding bath? A roll-top? Yeah, was it a roll top freestanding it, bath? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a freestanding bath, but the, but the end of the bath projected out into the room. Where was this, Greg? Which town were you? We, was this Oxford or Cambridge? <laughs> <laughs> it was in Isleworth in West London. <laughs> <laughs> it was only because of a, a, a mix up in housing agreements. Uh, we soon sorted out after a term. I only had to do it for a term. What was the mix up? I'd agreed to move in with these three guys, and we got the wrong size house. My <laughs> God, that's not, that's not a mix-up, that's just stupidity. Yeah, there was four of you, and you got a three-bedroom house with a bit, a bit of a mix-up. Okay. <laughs> the boys blamed me, which is why I got the bath. Why did they blame you? Because I was the one who booked the house. <laughs> How did you get into university? <laughs> So, Lee, what are you thinking? Marcus. I think it's too preposterous to be true. Mm. The taps. Phil? Taps for me, you don't... If you're going to sleep in a bath, you don't put your head no. up the taps. Okay. I think it might be true, but I'm not going to over... Oh, well, you're the skip. You'll cut the armbands, son. I might be the skip. Do you get armbands if you're a captain? <laughs> Only if you can't swim. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I don't know if this is in the spirit of this game, this is true. <laughs> That was sufficiently moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with it. I'm saying it's true now. 
What are you saying, Skippy? Should we say true? True. Not Skippy, Rob, not Skippy. I'm not going to go and go and fetch help. I'm a skip. Someone's fallen into a mine shop. We're going to go for truth. Go on, mate. True. True. We're changing. We're going for truth. You're saying it's true. Greg Davis, were you telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? Do you feel, David, any sense of genuine competition in this game? Yes, I do, yeah. And I think you're going to like me very much. It was a lie. Yes, it was a lie. Greg didn't sleep in his bathtub every night for his first term at university. Kevin, <laughs> you're next. I once accidentally bought a horse. Sorry? <laughs> you bought a what? A horse. A horse? Sorry, I missed the S. Um... <laughs> you claim that you once accidentally bought a horse. Am I right? You're right. Right. Fine, we're all clear. <laughs> Under what circumstances? What did you think you were buying? Um, I never thought I was buying anything. I thought I was <laughs> renting. <laughs> a horse. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> so you, you paid to rent a horse and then at the end when you tried to return the horse they said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I've been trying to get rid of Psycho for years. <laughs> That's pretty much it. How long had you imagined that you were going to rent it for? Uh, we thought we were going to rent it for like, 25 minutes. And did they charge? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was in Bulgaria. On holiday. <laughs> OK, so what did it cost in local Bulgarian currency? What is the local Bulgarian currency? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was... We're, we're gonna it was 200 lev. <laughs> lev, L-E-V. I don't know how you pronounce it, but lev. 200 lev. 200 and how, Bulgarian. how much is that in, in sterling, roughly? Roughly, I at think the time. About, at the time, I think it was about £90. Pounds. So we thought so it was a good deal. Ninety pounds for twenty-five minutes. For twenty-five minutes on a horse. But you said we thought we were going to rent it for twenty-five minutes. There was me and my friend. So you were. It was gonna a lads' holiday. We were eighteen. We thought we'd go horse riding. <laughs> In Bulgaria. In Bulgaria. <laughs> Did you question the odd sort of time slots they were going for? I mean, guy... I've never been pony <laughs> trekking, but I imagine they sort of rent you the horse for perhaps a couple of hours. Well, the or, guy... or at least a solid half hour. You get twenty-five minutes, and then the horse needs a break. For five minutes, and then something else And then else you comes. keep the horse forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never knew that. What happened when you tried to take it back? Um, the guy explained to us that it, the guy was gone. The guy. <laughs> <laughs> the guy explained to us that he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> never say the phrase on this game. The guy explained to us that he'd gone. Well, there was two. <laughs> never say that. There was two different guys. There was two yeah, guys. Look me if you want to speak to my client. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are. We are there was guys. There was guy A. Guy A. A. That's, he was, a. That's a Bulgarian name. It's very well known. Yeah. <laughs> the most famous Bulgarian name. Yeah. Uh, guy Dimitri. I think that. No, uh, Guy A. <laughs> <laughs> and Guy B. Right? right. We thought we were going horse riding and we were heading towards the place where you actually hire the horse. Stables. The, yeah. the official. <laughs> <laughs> the stables. Right? <laughs> He's making it up, and I'm on his team. <laughs> <laughs> but a patience, Brian. Come on, Brian. We met a guy on the way who had a horse, and we thought he was doing that thing, no, you in Asda, when you've got a shopping trolley, and you're taking it back, and somebody else needs a trolley, and you say, I'll join that one. <laughs> So we thought the guy was saying, I need to go all the way to the actual stable. Official. I'm from the stable. Yeah. So just hire this horse. That's what the guy said? Yeah. So we thought, all right, that there was a bit of a communication breakdown. There was a Bulgarian guy trying to speak English and two Scottish guys trying to speak English. <laughs> so we thought the guy had gave us the horse to ride and come back yeah. in 25 minutes. Were you minutes. not surprised? That, I mean, I've never been on holiday to Bulgaria, but I imagine that things would be a bit cheaper in Bulgaria than in Britain. Were you not surprised that it cost you the equivalent of £90 to hire a horse for 25 minutes? <laughs> it was 25 minutes each, so it was two of us. Yeah. Right. So we chipped in for a horse What's for 25 minutes each. But still, even if you thought you were going to get 25 minutes each, that's a lot, isn't it? Oh, it's an hour. You need to give the horse a break, as I said. <laughs> Let's forget about the 25 minutes. Just forget about the horse. Let's forget about the horse. Yeah. That's absolutely, obviously bullshit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you take the horse back. Guy B, who's the guy you met on the way to the stables. He's gone. He's, he's gone. gone. He's no gone. sign of him. No, no, he's gone. So you say to Guy A, well, we hired this as part of your not bothering to actually go to the stables but getting it a few hundred yards away <laughs> scheme. <laughs> we hired this horse for 25 minutes at an extortionate rate. <laughs> Nevertheless, here it is. And what did he say? <laughs> We went back to the place where we picked up the horse. Oh, so not to the stable, no. but to the random place in the road. Couple of hundred yards from the stable. So you, bewilderedly, where has the mysterious man gone? I would have thought that logically, when you were returning, having thought that it had come from the stable, that you'd been lucky not to have to walk to the stable before hiring it, you might nevertheless have thought, well, the stable's where it's got to go back to, yeah. rather than, well, Sodom, this is where we picked it up from. I'm not actually taking the stable. I'm going to stand here. Away from the stable, go, come over here! <laughs> come and get your own horse! <laughs> At which point locals start waving, going, no! You keep! <laughs> Kevin, 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 look, look at me, look at me. You're taking the horse back. Look at me! <laughs> what happened next? Taking off from? You're taking the horse back. Say, no. you, well, you let's, let's go back to the start. <laughs> Kevin Bridges, for the love of God, <laughs> please tell us what happened. <laughs> right. We bought a horse. <laughs> we thought we'd rented the horse. We'd done the horse riding, took it back to the initial place we picked up the horse. Yes. Locals explained we'd went a counterfeit. Horse guy, it wasn't the <laughs> official horse riding stable. This was a counterfeit horse. <laughs> this wasn't a genuine horse. This was maybe two guys in a costume. That would explain the 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I can't do 25 minutes. <laughs> the, the, giveaway, the, the giveaway was after 25 minutes, I won't win. Oh. <laughs> right, let's crack on, lads. <laughs> So, David's team, what do you think? <laughs> Truth or lie? I mean, the trouble with this game is it plays tricks with your mind. <laughs> but I don't think it's true. You don't really it's think got to be, it's, hasn't it's it? Got to, got to be it's got to be a lie. got to be a lie. Yeah, it's saying it's a lie. Right, so here we go. This it really is. Here's the moment. This is more than any other episode I've done of this show. <laughs> this is the moment we've been waiting for. <laughs> Bridges, is it true or is it a lie? It's true. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> For three weeks, I was listed as a missing person by Interpol. <laughs> wow. Uh, when did this happen? In the mid-90s. Where were you? Had you, had you actually disappeared? Like... I was in Morocco. What were you doing there? I was on a bike ride in Spain. <laughs> you were on... You were on a bike ride in Spain in Morocco. <laughs> Can I have a moment to chat with my client? <laughs> <laughs> what happened was I met someone in Spain on a train. A Moroccan so, hang on, man. Was, was, was this bike ride in Spain happening on the train? <laughs> Was it, it was well, because I know that you get those Spanish Spanish bike rides on trains in Morocco. It's probably one of those. No, it was there was bad weather, and that's why I took the train from the north of Spain to the south of Spain because apparently, according to the local newspaper, there was better, more agreeable bicycling weather. <laughs> and how, how, how did you then get? How did you then get into Morocco, though? That is because I met that Moroccan bloke on the train. <laughs> and, which, and which Moroccan bloke? Yeah, does he have a name? Uh, I, I can't quite remember, but it was Mohammed or something. <laughs> uh, 
Mohammed the Moroccan, well. you met on, on the train in Spain. He asked me if I wanted to join him to go to Morocco. And then I thought, well, I've never been outside Europe. In for penny, in for pound. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you were picked up by a strange Moroccan on a, on a train and agreed to go back to Morocco with him. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> How did you find out that you were on the Interpol list? I realised only once I rang my parents, once I was back in Spain, and I rang my parents, and for them it was like someone found them from beyond the grave. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why didn't you ring your parents from Morocco? Because that man, that Mohammed... He, <laughs> he you remember, remember Mohammed, don't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 The man on the train. The Moroccan on the, the train. Moroccan on the train who yeah, invited yeah. him back to his house. So yeah. then, then when I was staying uh, with Mustafa and his family... <laughs> <laughs> From what uh, port did you leave Spain and into which port did you enter Good Morocco? Good question. Well, we left Spain, if I remember correctly, from Alcaceras and went over to Ceuta which is one of the two Spanish enclaves in the north of Morocco. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just clutched victory from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> How was it then resolved? How did you end up getting off of the list? Well, hang on a minute, we're jumping ahead. Yeah, what the yeah hell he's allowed to do that, him, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I was travelling uh, with, uh, with uh, no, uh, Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed. Uh, <laughs> my client is getting mixed up because at passport control they said you must have a passport. <laughs> and he's getting a bit mixed up with the name. I'm curious as to the fact that Interpol has a missing persons list. Yeah, no, what happened is my uh, parents uh, got involved and they got Interpol involved. Right. And I sent a few postcards, one of them, to my friend Mark. And on that postcard, I wrote, I've joined the Foreign Legion. <laughs> Probably see you never again, have a good life or something. And then, Mark, being a quite clever boy, thought, OK, with this postcard, I can have a lot of fun. I go round Henning's parents and say them something along the lines of, oh, uh, Herr Wien, Frau Wien, you might be interested in this. Sorry, so your friend Mark yes. used this postcard to mentally torture your parents. <laughs> I'll make his parents think he's disappeared forever for a laugh. Well, it's German sense of humour. <laughs> About this, uh, about this Moroccan chap who we're calling Mohammed. He hadn't been home for many, many years, and so we couldn't take the boat straight to Morocco. We had to go to one of the Spanish enclaves because he had to collect a suitcase full of books from a cafe in <laughs> Ceuta. <laughs> why, why did he have a suitcase full of books? Because someone left them there for him. <laughs> but why books? In a suitcase. Well, that is, it was back in the mid 90s, people were still reading. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he went to a cafe in the Spanish enclave of Morocco yes. to collect a suitcase which he told you was full of books. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose a friend of his left them there. Yes, but I why? mean, you know what it sometimes is like, isn't it? Like, uh, well, I can't quite think of it in <laughs> <laughs> But if he could, it would be like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, this Interpol list that you were on, can you just elaborate on how your parents got you onto it? Well, they rang the consulate and they rang which all sorts Which consulate? Of... The German one. Which, and... which German consulate? Well, the one in Morocco. They, they, they and didn't the ring the police, they rang the German consulate in Morocco. Well, that's how you would go about it, wouldn't you? It's no good know. ringing your local Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens then with the list? Do you just... Th they have to tell Interpol, stop yeah. looking for Henning. We yeah, found it. I suppose it. so, yeah. Well, did they? <laughs> for all My we know, they're still looking line... for you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safe! <laughs> So what do you think, David? Does, that, does any of that have the ring of truth, or has he made all that up? What do you think, Kirsty? I think 
it's so odd and inconsistent and unlikely that it must be true. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm leaning towards as well. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think, I think, I think that as well. I think it's true. Yeah. Henning, was that the truth or were you telling a lie? Well, this story is true. <laughs> 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 yes, it's true. Henning was listed as a missing person by Interpol. This is the cushion that I used to carry my pet owl around on. <laughs> I would have brought the owl, but he escaped last week. <laughs> James T, what do you think? What, what kind of an owl was it? Oh, yeah. Tawny. Yeah. Tawny. <laughs> It's all perch on branches, yeah. so how did you get it to, to perch on a big, flat, soft cushion? Oh, Steve, it's so good to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> how did I? <laughs> That's right. Is there a problem here, Steve? <laughs> but, here are the tallow marks. I have a rare breeds farm near me, and they had to get rid of a tawny owl that was injured. It couldn't use its wings, and it, I, I shouldn't use the words, it couldn't use its bottom. <laughs> for what? For, for, for doing what? For poo pooing. What, what, and what, what did it use? <laughs> <laughs> so, as a trustee of the organisation, because it's just down the road from me in Warehorn, I agreed to. Have... <laughs> <laughs> I agreed that I would look look after it. It actually had what you would call a cholestomy bag. <laughs> We call it a colostomy bag. <laughs> <laughs> if I said it we, Yeah, we wouldn't have picked it up, but you did specifically say that's what we would have called it. <laughs> and I, I thought I'd better address this, because we really, we really wouldn't. Steve, is an owl's colostomy bag called a colostomy bag? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, uh, it you, is. You wouldn't really need it because the, the majority of, of kind of uh, solid faecal matter with an owl comes out of its mouth. Yeah. Mm. No, we're dealing with a very sick owl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I sound very aggressive there. <laughs> but I can see. Look, he's escaped now, and I can see his little face. We were given a pipette with what was so owl, it, it, owl nourishment. So you had to feed it with a by pipette. pipette. Yes. And, 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 and how did it stand on the cushion if, as Steve says, it needs a, a perch? It, no, it was fine, just so... I've right. clearly not made it clear. This is an incredibly <laughs> sick bird. <laughs> you can't judge it, so is it by is it the normal <laughs> torn. So this what? is just a it's lump so of meat sick. and feathers. <laughs> that is just hanging on in there. But the thing still escapes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Actually, I've... I suspect it was killed by my cats. <laughs> <laughs> why did this, this um, owl sanctuary, when it has a sick owl, why, why didn't it look after the owl <laughs> itself <laughs> rather than give it to a, a local Comedian. celebrity? <laughs> because I'm a very... I have a cushion and cats. <laughs> with cats. I'm very closely associated with it. The... Sorry, my client would like a minute. <laughs> 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 You had clearly said to them you were going to nurse it back to health? No, that was never going to happen. It's palliative care. <laughs> no, it's palliative care. Palliative care, it palliative was like care a, like for the owl. A hospice for the owl, yeah. Oh, the owl. Right. And we had some oh. decent times. <laughs> Did he have a name, this owl? We, we called it... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Did you? You call it. <laughs> so are you upset, Bob? I can tell. Yeah. If you need a minute, it's okay. But what, what did you call, call it? it? Sorry. What, what did you name? call it? What did we call the owl? Yeah. Well, we called him Mavis. <laughs> Mavis. <laughs> Bob, what did you what did you feed it with the, with the pet? It was I, it was described to me as as owl, <laughs> as owl nourishment. <laughs> it, 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 Everything goes You just take bowls and put them in a liquidizer. <laughs> no, just, I, Steve, I still know I can't impress on you. <laughs> the most you got out of it. Uh, <laughs> it's just a lift and lid. So it, it, was, it wasn't perched then, it was reclined on the cushion. <laughs> that, that was its. That's its. <laughs> That was its deathbed. Yeah. Well, we'd have like a broomstick or something and told it. And, it. <laughs> and what have you told the owl yeah. sanctuary? What have you told them? Because they must have been upset. Uh, no, I've told them he's passed away, yeah. <laughs> and they, they, they said, well, that's fine. We knew Mavis was going to die soon. <laughs> that's why we gave him or her to, to yeah. you, a comedian who lives locally, to keep. <laughs> 
cushion in the same room as some cats. So my, my client what? would like to change his plea. <laughs> I don't, this, I don't, this isn't sounding... And you're, you're a trustee, did you say, of this charity? Yes. It's a rare breeds farm in Warehorn. Um, <laughs> does family days. Um, sadly, I haven't got an owl at the moment. But... What? <laughs> so, David, what are you thinking? Is this true? Um, no, this isn't true. <laughs> I think you made all that up. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't believe they would let him bring a dying, tawny owl home. And... No, I don't no. think so. I think we're saying it's a lie. I think you but, are. But, yeah. And I think that's the, you know, the rare breed centre probably needs to look at its working practices <laughs> if it happens to be true. But... OK, Bob, <laughs> truth or lie? I was uh, telling a lie. <laughs> <laughs> The D in my name stands for delicious. <laughs> Obviously, why? Well, it was the late 60s when I was born, 1969. There are a lot of uh, black men my age around that time being given names like Reginald and Winston and delicious because... <laughs> Because uh, at that time in America, affirmative action had just started. So black women saw an opportunity for their children to get more jobs. So what they did was we would give him a name that will enable him to be, you know, recognizable yet dignified to potential employers. And... And delicious is dignified. Well, I mean, you have to understand how th it's, li it's a little different in the black community than it is in your white world. And, <laughs> and so, um, like, the name Delicious commands great respect in the, in the ghetto. Um, <laughs> you, uh... You, you probably don't listen to much rap music, do you, Fern? Uh, then, uh, there's, uh, MC Delicious. Uh, <laughs> um, Big Papa Delicious. French Golden. <laughs> Where did Reginald come from? Uh, Reginald is a German name. It means mighty or wise power. And um, uh, delicious means uh, very tasty. <laughs> what was your father's name? My father's name is Homer. His middle bit. He didn't have a middle name. No. Um, uh, he grew up in the 30s and 40s, and it was very tough times for black people, and he couldn't afford a middle name. <laughs> and do you have brothers and sisters? I do indeed. And what are their names? Um, well, there's, there's Brenda, there's Kathy, there's Oliver, um, there's Scrumptious. Um, <laughs> I don't think people would have thought that calling you delicious would help you get jobs, <laughs> except, except as a food. <laughs> well, I think, shall we say it's a lie? I yeah. think that's what we're yeah. going to feel stupid, I think but it's true. That. So you're saying it's a lie? Yes. OK, Reg, is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. Yeah. So what does the D stand for in your name? What does the D stand for in my name? None of your business. <laughs> the D in Reg's name does not stand for delicious. <laughs> I did once meet a person called Delicious, but uh, not sure it was her real name, uh, or if the other girl was really her sister, or if either of them were actually qualified nurses. 